Okay. Good evening. Bonsoir tout le monde. My name is Sabrina and I work at the Information and Culture section of the Embassy of Japan in Ottawa. I will be your MC tonight. Uh, this evening, we will be introducing craftsmanship of Japan and a brand that is recognized around the world, Sakai Forged Knives. We will do so through connection with French blacksmith, Mr. Eric Chevalier, who currently lives in Sakai in Osaka in Japan. Mr. Chevalier is a professional blacksmith who founded the Sakai, a brand of traditional knives and tools. He also promotes Sakai knives to foreign markets around the world. Hello, Eric. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Oh. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. We're happy to have you with us tonight. Yoroshiku um, onegaishima. Later this evening. <laughs> Later this evening, we will have the honor of visiting Sasuke Kobo, the studio of Mr. Chevalier's master, Hirakawa-san, with Mr. Chevalier as a guide. Before we start our main presentation, I would like to take a moment to go over tonight's program and some housekeeping regarding Zoom. Um, so uh, today we will have a full program uh, during the presentation and demonstration. Please don't hesitate to use the Q&A functions at the bottom of your screen to ask questions. Uh, yes, so you can see today's agenda on the screen right now. We have a full evening. Um, as I said, uh, during the lecture and demonstration on forging knives, uh, you can use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we will address as many questions as possible during the Q&A um, at the end. We welcome questions in both. You can see on the screen right now where the Q&A section is on your screen with your Q&A function. Um, during the Q&A, we will welcome questions in both English and French. Uh, bien que la présentation soit en anglais, n'hésitez pas à poser vos questions en français. Okay. We will go over some prohibited items. Please note that it is prohibited to record and screen capture this program. Thank you very much for your understanding. Please also note that once you leave this webinar, you will be invited to fill out a questionnaire. We would appreciate if you can take a few minutes to fill it out. Thank you. I would now like to invite Ambassador Kamada to present his opening message. Uh, good evening. Uh Welcome to our Sakai Forced Knives webinar. Thank you for being with us tonight. Premièrement, j'aimerais remercier notre présentateur, Monsieur Eric Chavarier, qui partagera son métier avec nous ce soir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chevalier, uh, for bringing the traditional blacksmithing techniques from Sakai to our screens um, in Canada tonight. <clears throat> Japanese knives are known around the world uh, for their unique uh, handmade design, quality, and sharp blades. Tonight, we have the wonderful opportunity to learn about and witness the uh, centuries old techniques used to make Japanese traditional knives. The expertise of uh, blacksmith uh, knife forging method is what makes Japanese knives truly remarkable. Professional chefs around the world favor Japanese knives to achieve precise and clear cuts. I have a chef at my residence and he serves a variety of cuisine, Japanese cuisine to my uh, important guests. And he has a collection of uh, Japanese knives, as a matter of course, including one from Sakai. According to him, those knives could uh, help him uh, cut things sharply. Uh, it is also worth mentioning uh, that Japanese uh, forged uh, blades are not used uh, exclusively by uh, professional uh, chefs, like uh, my chef uh, in the kitchen, and are used uh, in a variety of fields uh, beyond cuisine. For example, the traditional Japanese arts of ikebana, flower arrangement, 
and bonsai uh, require the use of uh, tools such as scissors and uh, pliers to care and uh, meticulously arrange the branches and stems of plants in order to create a work of art. Je voudrais terminer ce message en remerciant encore une fois, Monsieur Chavalier, pour la présentation de ce soir. Thank you everyone for joining us and taking that wonderful opportunity to learn more about the Japanese types, their history and their craftsmanship. Please enjoy your evening. Thank you. Merci. Arigatou gozaimashita. Okay, thank you very much, Ambassador Kamara, for the opening remarks. Without further ado, let's move on to our main program tonight. Let's go to Sakai in Japan and Mr. Chevalier. Bonjour from Ottawa. Bonjour. Bonjour. You can see me. Please. Bonjour. Merci, Sabrina. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, merci, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, Minasan, arigato gozaimasu. Um, yes, so today we are in Sakai to present you uh, a really old forge here. And I will just introduce me a few. Uh, so my name is, is Eric Chevalier. I'm uh, French and I came here in Sakai uh, 10 years ago. Uh, I came to learn Japanese language and to learn uh, this beautiful knowledge of forging process. Um, I was an uh, apprentice, blacksmith apprentice, during uh, five years here. And uh, I, have, I had complete, complete my whole apprenticeship here. And uh, now I am uh, a coordinator and an advisor for the Sakai industrial promotion on traditional crafts. Uh, so today I will introduce you uh, Sasuke because Sasuke is one of the uh, oldest forge uh, here in Japan. So I hope you will enjoy it together. So uh, Sasuke is in Sakai. Sakai is uh, just in the south of uh, Osaka. So it's uh, the second uh, biggest uh, airport, Japanese airport of, uh, of the country of Japan. So it's really easy to come. So from Osaka is just 10 minutes. So please enjoy and come here uh, in Sakai. So you can check on the map where is Sakai. So you have Tokyo more on the north east and Sakai it's in the middle of Japan, a really old heritage and many old history here. So you can discover other things than just only the forging uh, knowledge. So you, uh, you can enjoy other traditional uh, craftsmanship. I, I think, yes, we don't have the quiz because we have a surprise for you. <laughs> uh, we have a small squeeze, if you can see on, the, um, on your screen, because uh, Sasuke make one of the most uh, expensive on one of the most, uh, I would say, uh, long process uh, scissors. He just make uh, traditional scissors on traditional knife. So our question for you is how long uh, it took to make the most uh, beautiful and the most expensive uh, Sasuke scissors? So you have three answers, three weeks, three months, or three years. You have one minute. <laughs> so check it. I remember you, uh, it's the most expensive scissors in the world. And it takes a really long time, three weeks, three months, or three years. To make uh, usual uh, Japanese scissors, it's three or four days. But this is the most expensive and the most difficult knife. Uh, not knife, scissors, sorry. To make a knife, it's about two days if it's all handmade. Can give you a small idea about uh, these really good and expensive scissors. You have behind me uh, the building of Sasuke, really old place. Sasuke is 
21 generation is really old, one of the oldest uh, Japanese blacksmith family. Oh, so we got the answer. We are uh, at 7% three weeks, 42% uh, three months, on 51% three years. And you are right, it's the third answer, it's the C. The most expensive scissors of Sasuke took three years. <laughs> we will check it after the visit. So I invite, I invite you. Sorry for my accent, I'm French, or forgive me. <laughs> uh, so follow me and we will discover Sasuke. Come here. <laughs> so we are walking here in Sakai City in front of uh, Sasuke's Black's Place. Black means play, sorry. Welcome. Ah, hello, Sasuke. Sasuke is making knife now, so you can come here just to check it. So now Sasuke make a knife, but he will make scissors after. Do 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 do. Just check it. Sasuke, ohayo gozaimasu. Ohayo gozaimasu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. So now he is making a Japanese traditional knife. Ah, Sasuke san. Ima ima hocho tsukutte masu kedo. Tsugi wa ano hasami deshou ne. Okay, so he's saying he's making a traditional Japanese knife, and after he will make a traditional scissors. So, as you can see, he's beating the warm metal. He has to reach a temperature of 700 degrees. 800 degrees. If it's too cold, you can't beat it enough to make it long. So he's using a, a machine. We call this machine. This machine is called belt hammer because you could see there is a, a belt in the middle of the hammer. It's like a human moving, it's like natural moving. It's why we use this belt hammer. And from now, it will beat uh, by hand. So you can feel and you can enjoy the real old traditional blacksmithing. I remember you, it's 21 generation of blacksmithing here you are seeing, you are watching. This knife is a, we call it a Santoku or Bunka knife. It's an all purpose knife. So you can use for usual uh, home cooking or for like a chef knife. You can cut everything, not too hard things, of course, but vegetables, meat, fish, fruits. It's like a European knife, but pure homemade one. So now he's making what we call the shinogi. The shinogi is uh, uh, the, the, the line in the middle of the knife. It's like a pure Japanese design, but we make this line uh, to out say, um, if you have the shinogi, a good shinogi, so the, a good middle line uh, on the knife, you can uh, sharp it easily. You can sharp it easily. And uh, you, when you cut uh, something, the food don't stick to the blade. So it can take a very long time to make because it's all handmade process, all handmade. You can see with the light a few, the line on the middle of the, of the blade. He's not stri striking flat. 
the blade, but just diagonal. So the temperature is really important. So even you can maybe you think is doing nothing is watching and looking already with a uh, good attention uh, the fire color uh, he's checking it there is nothing to check it it's just by eyes so Sasuke uh, make a knife uh, from his uh, seven, uh, 16, 16 years old. He learned uh, this knowledge from his father, uh, and his father learned it from his grandfather, from his father too. So the grandfather, it's a really a old family. So uh, he learned and he gets a passion about knife. Uh, when he was a child, he was watching and um, saying uh, his father uh, making knife. So you can feel the ambience, the atmosphere of the Japanese forge. He beat it slowly and he used uh, water too. As you can see, he put just few water little of water uh, on the blade to make it flat. So uh, it don't hurt the blade. When you strike it, there is no uh, mark on the blade. It's really flat, really smooth. So if you touch the blade, now it's really hot, so you, you can touch it. But if you touch the blade, it's really smooth. This is a real uh, old knowledge of Japanese blacksmiths. You, do, you just, it's not just strike the blade it to strike smartly <laughs> you have to get a good skills uh, to make this kind of smooth blade so he was making uh, the blade part and now he's making the part we put inside the handle it's really important too He beat this part, he make it smooth. He have to adjust by eyes, by eyes, uh, the, good, the good millimeters, the good thickness. It's a slow on producing um, work to have the perfect thickness. And he made it. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing. So, the process is long, more long, of course. But now, he show you just uh, easily <laughs> the parts of his work. And the next step uh, is the scissors, the traditional scissors. So I will explain you a few about the place of Sasuke while he is um, making the preparation. <laughs> so yes, Sasuke uh, have to use charcoal. You can come here a few. He use a lot of uh, tools. He makes his own tools, of course, because nobody makes the tools for the blacksmith. He makes tools for other people and, of course, for himself, too. Uh, so as you can see, maybe you have this kind of anvil. It's not a usual European or American style anvil. It's rectangular like this. It's a square anvil. It's a pure traditional Japanese anvil we use here. So. He will make this part 
it will make for you the most uh, difficult and intrusive part of the scissors it's the blade because to make a blade you have to use two different materials you have the soft iron on the hard high carbon steel for example yeah this is soft iron and on the soft iron you will put high carbon steel like this and when you put it you can see the line here and this is a blade and we'll continue to beat it to beat it it's not michael jackson beat it <laughs> it's like this yeah he beat the blade oh sorry my my fingers are very cold now you put the uh, high carbon seal on the blade and you continue to make it like this and yep you have the blade so he will showing he will show you this he used charcoal to make a good blade uh, the best is to use wood charcoal it's a uh, black pine japanese black pine charcoal we call it kuromatsu kuromatsu it's black charcoal so he just you have the handvil of course and you have the traditional we call it bello bello je crois, je crois i believe in in english it's not a machine it's all hand made one you don't use mask you don't wear mask you don't wear protection because japanese Japanese blacksmiths. Um, in Japanese, we say the 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 craftsman have to feel everything uh, during the work. So even it's not really good for health <laughs> to have this lot of smoke <laughs> inside you. Uh, it's the best way to feel your work and to make good things. You can enjoy the song of the forge. You don't have the smell, but our staff can fit it. <laughs> They're really professional because it's very really strong. And inside here, you have water. It's why we have the smoke. Because when you use fire, the place can get really dry. So to keep uh, wet a uh, humid environment, we use water inside this. And after, the, the water is hot, it's warm, it's perfect to take a bath. So when he finish his working day, he takes the water and he put it in the bath to relax himself after a hard day. So you have to reach a temperature of 800 degree for the first step. This powder, we call it borax. Borax, with my French accent, is borax. Uh, this powder, it's like a glue. Uh, to stick the hard carbon steel with a soft iron. So now you are watching us, but if you come here to Sasuke or in Sakai, you can really enjoy everything. The smell, the temperature, it's really hot. Because even we have many video on YouTube on at the television, there is no better way to enjoy and to feel it really. Of course, nowadays it's a very difficult situation with the coronavirus and many things in the world. But if you have the occasion, the time to come here, please come and enjoy. 
and it's not really common. He's used his left feet to move it. So no, it's not too yellow. It's not too hot. It's seven, 700 degrees. He's preparing the soft iron before to put the carbon steel. He put the borax on the blade, oh, not the blade, not yet. It's just iron. And now he's putting the carbon steel on the soft iron. So now maybe we can call it a blade. The smell it's really special to the borax. It's not chemical, it's not chemical smell. It's like a mix between iron, charcoal. It's very difficult to, to describe. And now with his left feet, he activates the air for the fire. Everything by eyes. Now, ten ten hundred degrees. Ah, no, measure. Yeah, yeah, that's ten degrees. This year, yeah, this year. Now, his goal is to reach one thousand one hundred degrees. It's the perfect temperature to mix the carbon steel and the iron together. If it's too cold, it can't stick. So it's will slide down. You can't you can't use it. If it's too hot, it will melt, and you can't use it too. So the best is one thousand seventy degree and one thousand one hundred degree. You can hear the air. Shoo, shoo. <laughs> On um, me, I was apprentice here during five years. I did the same things with him. You can, yeah, good. Our stuff is good. You can, you can watch. You can see the fire inside the fire now. So no, you are Sasuke. You are the blacksmith. activate the bellow slowly because as I said if it's too hot you can't use the metal slowly and slowly and after oh, it's my hand hey bye <laughs> you will be uh, strike the metal here in the handville it's really impressive though don't be too surprised because it's like fireworks when you will strike the metal after it reach uh, 1100 degree it's like a small explosion let me check it uh, the metal have to get uh, like a yellow white colors between yellow and white colors that it means it's 1000 degree So with his right hand, use the tools to check inside the fire. He's concentrate. It's the step you have to be the more concentrating. Concentrating, sorry, concentré. <laughs> um, as all traditional blacksmiths he lose his <laughs> his tools where is my hammer where is my <laughs> metal and from now he will strike the metal be ready this is his left feet he activate so from now it's just light but the second time it's like an explosion So now it's kawaii, it's cute, <laughs> just a few, few spark.
but the next part, the next step, it's impressive. Mm. He's telling me I have to protect my feet with with a protection like this. Wood. <laughs> I guess because it can hurt my shoes. So he has a protection uh, on his uh, right leg. You can see it just close. So I remember when I was apprentice many times, I, I burned myself my feet my hand my ears in my ears a, a small spark uh, fly to my ears it was really painful um, no we are in the serious things <laughs> when he used his left feet it's mean it's became, becoming serious <laughs> No. And it's not finished. <laughs> and the next, he has to bend the carbon steel on the iron to make the full uh, blade. So I, I don't know how, how you do feel uh, in front of your screen, but here it's still impressive. Even I'm used to make it. It's more it's it's more impressive when you see it. When you make it, you are concentrate. So you don't care. You have to make your work. You have to work. But you are, when you are customer, uh, just visitors. It's impressive because you, you just check it, you just look at the left fit, second series again, and this time too, it's uh, maybe more impressive than the first, or oh, in fact, not the second time. The third time, it's more impressive usually. Let's go. So now he's striking the blade and he makes the blade style and he cut this part because this part uh, it's burnt by the fire because it's a thinnest part. It was the thinnest part, so too hot to be used. Okay, come closer, come closer if you can to check the blade. Mm -hmm. You can see the blade diagonal. Um, you continue to strike it, to strike it, to make it thinnest, and to make the blade. It's all handmade. As you can see, he is the last scissors maker in Japan, uh, hand scissors maker. There is other scissor brand, but usually it's machine made. Ah, arigato, arigato gozaimashita. So I will explain a few about uh, this place during his making preparation. Ah, oh, oyakata Ah, you can do it. And he finish. So here. You have this kind of traditional things. You have the pure traditional uh, Japanese, de not decoration, it's like divinity. It's really old, it's cultural things. 
and we will let uh, him prepare himself and we'll go to the shop. Uh, it's really interesting to follow me, come here. I see, I see you on my screen, so take care. <laughs> here, welcome to Sasuke's shop. Bienvenue. So as usual on traditional Japanese old house, you have to take off the shoes. I eat too much yesterday. I'm heavy. <laughs> On your ranch, you check your shoes here. So here is the former house of Sasuke's family. Uh, Sasuke born here, he was born here. You have Irori. Irori is a traditional place in Japan. You can take the tea, drink a tea with your family or your friends. Yeah, check the house. And now you have what we are interesting for. It's a knife and scissor. So this is traditional Japanese knife. You have different category. You have single edge, we say kataba in Japanese. So there's two bladed single edge. There is many different categories, but I just choose few one, uh, maybe it's easier to understand a few about the Japanese uh, knife. When you have the three, it's double edge. So I will explain uh, you about what is the uh, difference between single edge and double edge. So let's start with the uh, single edge, single edge. So it's not metal, it's just wood, just to show you. It's, uh, it's uh, I would say, um, a model just to explain easily. So you have two colors on this wood here. It's to represent the iron. So the, the yellow part, the, the clear part, it's the iron. And the black part, it's the carbon steel. Like this. So when I, sorry, up. Okay, so the iron, it's here. And the black part, it's the blade. You can see it on the real blade. The color is different here. So the blade is a carbon steel. And let's check the opposite side. You have all carbon steel on this part. Um, like here, this is the iron. So it's like scissors we put carbon steel on the iron. It's single edge. And come closer again. We are friends, you can come. <laughs> you have this blade with this angle. So this knife, it's to, um, to, to, to slice a fish. And because you have this angle, it's easier to sharp and the food don't stick to the blade. This knife is for a fish. We call it a deba. Deba knife. And for example, another famous single edge blade. It's the same process. Uh, soft iron, high carbon steel on the blade because you have the high carbon steel here. It's the same. And this knife, this beautiful knife, it's for sashimi, for fish, raw fish. And uh, we call it yanagiba or sashimi knife in Japanese. Yes, because we say knife in Japanese too. And you have the double edge. Double edge, it's the same. It's iron and carbon steel. But you have, again, uh, iron here. So the iron is inside. It's like a sandwich. So the iron is the bread and the cheese, because I love cheese, it's a carbon steel inside. Like uh, this one, it's too difficult after. <laughs> like this, this is its usual double edge, both sides. 
like this and you have the carbon steel inside on the blade to have a good cut. This small knife, it's a petit knife, petit couteau, petit knife, from the French, petit, small, petit knife. This knife, it's uh, for all purpose too. Japanese use it for fruit, mainly for fruit, but you can use it for vegetables or for meat too. Everything, it's all purpose knife, but short blade. You have the same style with the Santoku or Bunka knife. It was a knife he was making uh, and showing to us uh, uh, at the start of, at the beginning of the video, sorry. But with different handle, because traditional handle are like white wood, it's magnolia. Magnolia, it's a tree, it's a magnolia wood, uh, usually from Hokkaido, the north part of uh, Japan. And the black part, it's buffalo horn. This is the most traditional material we use, but you can use different material to make it more, I would say, impressive and beautiful. Uh, this is ebony wood. And I think this part is walnut. I'm not sure, but you can use everything. Sakura wood, many things. And you have a special knife, it's nakiri. Nakiri, it's for vegetable. Uh, this is the most traditional double-edged knife in Japan. Many people uh, want a Santoku knife because they think it's a real Japanese. Uh, of course, now it's Japanese, but Santoku knife, it's more from Europe. Nakiri knife, uh, it comes from the Chinese knife. It's why it's big and rectangular or square like this. So all Japanese, maybe around 16 years or, or more, uh, 60, 60 years old, sorry. Uh, all the Japanese usually have this kind of knife uh, in the kitchen. So you have many different type of knife. You can enjoy here in Sakai. Beautiful, no? <laughs> and after we have scissor. It's the little one <laughs> from the quiz. This scissor is the most expensive scissors in the world, and it, make, it took three years to make. It's not black, because I will take other scissors. I can take it, yes, okay. Usual scissors are black. But this one, it's brown because it's rust. So if it's rust, it's bad, you know, but no, it's a really old technique. It's like the ancestor of stainless steel. Uh, in the past, uh, to, 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 I would say, to keep the, the blade and the metal strong, they make it rust during uh, two years or three years. And you have to take attention, to pay attention, to check it, to put oil on uh, lacquer too, to keep it strong. And it's inlaid with gold. So this one is the most expensive, so I will Put it here so you can enjoy a few about this masterpiece. You can see the gold. On all parts are handmade, the screw to everything as we watch, as we see together in the forge. So, why Sakai? Why Sakai is famous uh, for knife or this kind of metal work? It's uh, because in Sakai we have big uh, emperor tomb, king tomb. Uh, we call it kofun in Japanese, and uh, it's uh, Japanese make it, built it, but this big tomb uh, between the third and the sixth century. It was just before the Buddhism uh, came, in, um, came in Japan. It's the old religion of uh, Japan, the Shintoism. 
And in Sakai, we have big tomb because uh, in the area of Sakai, uh, we had uh, maybe the first really rich and powerful emperor and king uh, of Japan. So many blacksmiths came here in Sakai to make tools uh, to build the emperor tomb. And they stay here. So it's why we have a big concentration of blacksmiths here in the city. And when they continue to rock the metal, and when they discover uh, the beauty of knife, uh, they ma they make it every day. And we have we have the we have the biggest concentration of blacksmiths of Japan here in Sakai. Sakai make eighty percent of all traditional Japanese knife. It's it's huge, because you have many different city, but it's not traditional. It's not handmade. They use machine and uh, uh, it's not historic. But Sakai is historic, it's traditional, and we make almost all of traditional Japanese knife for Japanese market. So I think Sasuke will come just to say a word. Sasuke san? Sasuke san, imasu ka? Okay, so Sasuke, uh, he's coming. He's just cleaning his hand, I think, because he can be uh, really dirty to, to make knife. So if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate uh, to send it uh, on the chat, I think. Yes. yes, can I visit Sasuke and observe? I think Sabrina will yes. read from me when we are reading Sasuke. <laughs> Few questions okay. if you have. Great. Uh, so now let's move on to the Q&A section. I will pick some questions in the chat. And uh, encore une fois, j'aimerais vous rappeler que les questions en français sont aussi les bienvenues. Um, so first of all, let's start with, um, does Sasuke-san do all the sharpening in-house or does some other sharpener sharpen like other Sakai blacksmiths? It's a really good question. It's a good question because uh, I can explain about, Sas about Sakai uh, process. Because in Sakai, uh, the blacksmith makes the blade, so he, he's the forge, he, he just forges the blade, and after he gives it to a sharpener. And the sharpener sharps the blade, and the sharpener gives it, uh, sell it, <laughs> to a seller, and the seller can make business. Uh, sometimes you have blacksmiths or sharpeners selling directly uh, their own blade, but usually it's separating between three or four different makers. You have the blacksmith, the sharpener, the handle maker, and the seller. It's four people. But uh, to answer to your question, Sasuke on the old time uh, made everything themselves uh, because Sasuke is uh, 21 generation so it's pretty old uh, when I was apprentice he was just blacksmith he sharp uh, the scissor for the scissors he make all the process the forging process and the sharpening process everything himself because nobody can uh, sharp uh, Sasuke scissors because it's very difficult so. Um, but for the knife, no, his son, uh, he gets an uh, apprentice here, and his son's speciality is sharpening. So no, uh, to answer to your question, Sasuke makes everything, the forging process and the sharpening process, and he sells too, so it's very good. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Uh, our next question, I think you've seen it in the chat, uh, is it possible to visit Sasuke and observe? Yes, of course, you can come here. Uh, maybe he's not forging uh, a knife when you come. It depends on the timing, because sometimes he's forging, sometimes he's sharpening, sometimes he's doing something else. But uh, you can call, uh, but because you are English speaker, it's better to send an email before to come. But if you come uh, without uh, send an email, you can try and you can visit the forge. Okay, great. That's great news. <laughs> um, the next would be, what is the main difference between Japanese knives and Canadian knives? Uh, I don't know a lot about Canadian knives, so I will talk about more European or usual and um, foreign, foreign your knife. Uh, in the old time, it was the same process. Uh, European or American, Canadian, uh, use the same material, soft iron on high carbon steel. Uh, there is many uh, good craftsmen in Canada and Canada too, and in France, in Europe too, and they make really good things. But uh, 
Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty. I, I talk in Japanese, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's maybe the single edge. The biggest difference is the single edge knife uh, skills uh, because it's very traditional. So if you want to have a knife to cook Japanese food, you have to get a Japanese knife um, because uh, the blade, of course, it's diagonal like this. It's single edge. Uh, the cutting is really, uh, really, really better. Uh, it's why uh, all uh, great chefs all, uh, all over the world use Japanese knife. And uh, because Japan, Japanese usually uh, separates uh, the task between the uh, blacksmith, the sharpener, and the seller, they can check really perfect the knife uh, at all step, at each step, and uh, they can make a lot of things. So usually it's cheaper, uh, like uh, it's cheaper than. Uh, handmade knife from Canadian people because usually they can, we can make it same for me and for my, my, my father or my grandfather when he, when, uh, he was in France. Uh, we, we can't make a lot of peace uh, in Europe or in Canada, uh, but Japanese can make a lot of peace, a lot of things just by hand. So the quality is good, the price is not so expensive, and uh, you can have single edge, and there is many different categories. Uh, if you want a knife for uh, vegetables, you can have a knife for vegetables. Usually in uh, Europe and in uh, America or Canada, uh, it's all-purpose knife. So I think it's uh, the bigger difference. If you buy a knife from a real blacksmith, uh, if he made all handmade in Canada, I think it's the same quality if it's the same steel. Um, but uh, but there is no the, the history of the knife, of course, or for single edge knife like this for sashimi on Japanese food. Of course, Japanese knife is the best. Okay, great. Uh, I see Hirakawa-san has joined us, so I just like to give a moment for introduction. Yeah, so welcome to Sasuke. I'm uh, the five, the fifth generation uh, of uh, Sasuke. Uh, in fact, to explain a few, uh, Sasuke is 21 generation of blacksmiths, but Sasuke's name uh, it's uh, new, uh, not not so new, but it's he is the five generation of Sasuke's brand for scissors. But uh, about the all this Japanese family is 21 generation. And uh, he thanks you a lot to uh, take the time to check and to see, to watch uh, his knowledge, because it's very really traditional. We don't have a lot of place like this in Japan. So thank you very much to join our Zoom. He make knife for 50 years. So it's really long, really long way. And he continue to learn. え、ちょっと、この挟みについてちょっと一言。あ、なんか特別で、ですのでね。うん。いろいろ説明のフィアバティーズ、まあ、この、あの、昔の名残というものを挟みに入れて、技術的なことを残そうと思って挟みに入れました。uh, to explain about Sakai history, uh, Sakai was famous for katana, of course. And uh, but after, when foreigners came to Sakai, they start to make fire gun because Sakai city was the only city to make the most uh, beautiful fire gun, and uh, they were used to put uh, gold and to inlay the go uh, with gold uh, the fire gun, the, the gun. 
so because his ancestors uh, was a fire gun maker, he decided to mix the knowledge of scissors and knife with the fire gun knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> so if you have other questions, I think you have uh, in the chat, I can see. Yes, I can see just a few minutes. Sabrina, please. <laughs> of course. <laughs> With pleasure. Um, so how long, you mentioned a single edge knife earlier. How long does it take to make one single edge knife? Ah, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I え、あとリオバは、うん、両方もまあ、だいたい同じぐらい。うん、インサイズ the more the more challenging so the ones that ah, are that require oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> merci désolé うん、ごめんなさい、一番なんかチャレンジなんか一番なんかそれはチャレンジで頑張ったものは何ですか頑張ったものそうですねやっぱりまあハサミのまあ調子とかまあ、まあ、鋼付けっていうのはもちろんですけど、ハサミの調子を出すのが一番難しい。材質が難しい。So of course this this scissors it's uh, the, the most difficult to make, but uh, the most difficult part and I didn't explain it's about the scissors blade. It's very difficult because usual scissors blade are flat. This is a usual scissor blade. Uh, it, it's wood, but it just will explain to you, yes. It's model. But Sasuke scissors it's not flat. It's difficult to see maybe on the camera. Yep. I'm, yeah, just a minute. Yes, ah, you can see it's helicoidal. <laughs> it's in curve like this. So it's really difficult to make, but when you have this uh, type of blade, it's pretty really hard to adjust. Uh, you can use many many years because usually when you use a uh, uh, usual scissor with flat uh, flat edge a flat blade if you have a space uh, between the two blades it can cut but sasuke scissors because you have this curve this curve uh, on the blade you can continue to use it and in fact sasuke scissors cut better after uh, many many months after you use it that's uh, than when you just buy it so you buy it and you can enjoy more of the cutting uh, of the edge after many months. で、これをこういう風に作るっていうことは他に強度がかかるのであの相当あの材質が良くなかったらダメなんですね。強度のある材質に作ってよく叩いて作って。で、だからその硬い強度のある作り方を生かしてこの包丁とか作ってるので全然強度的なものだから鋼が使ってるってことですねあの to make this kind of tool you have to use a good quality uh, good quality steel too so if the steel is not hard if it's soft steel you can have a good quality blade はいありがとうございましたはいありがとうございますあサブリナ <laughs> thank you <laughs> Hey, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> uh, thank you so much <laughs> for the wonderful opportunity that you gave us tonight. Unfortunately, we are out of time for question. Um, and thank you everyone for your attention tonight and for the great questions that were in the chat. There were many more. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go through them. Um, but thank you very much, Mr. Chevalier, to be our guide through Sasuke tonight. Merci, thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, so before we leave, I just want to mention that here in Ottawa, the Embassy of Japan hosts uh, cultural events regularly. Um, please uh, visit our homepage. Uh, before that, though, um, if you would like to know more about Sasuke, Mr. Chevalier de Sakai, uh, you can see some links on uh, these, the, your screens right now, as well as QR codes, 
and the links are also in the chat. So if anyone is interested to learn more, please use these links. Thank you very much. And uh, as I said, uh, here in Ottawa, the Embassy of Japan hosts cultural events. Um, please visit our homepage or follow us on social media if you would like to see more content about Japanese culture. And uh, since we had a lot of questions tonight, I would like to add that another event about Japanese knives in collaboration with the local Japanese knife store, Knifeware, and the Carleton University Japanese Association is upcoming. Uh, the link to the event will be posted in the chat, so please uh, feel free to visit our page, and uh, if you can, please join us for the event. Um, again, when exiting this uh, webinar, a questionnaire will pop up, so please take a few minutes to fill it out if you can, that would be very helpful to us. And thank you so much again for being with us tonight, and thank you again to all the team that made this possible. And we hope you had a wonderful time learning about Japanese knives and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>